This video shows you how you can download Windows 11 to put onto a CD or a USB stick so that you can install or reinstall Windows 11. Details coming up. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things will help us make more great videos for you. So you can do this from any computer, I believe, ranging from Windows 7, 8, 8.1, 10 or 11. Now if you're running Windows 10 then I believe as long as your computer is compatible with Windows 11 you are entitled to a free upgrade to Windows 11. Unfortunately if you're running Windows 7, Windows 8 and 8.1 you do need to buy a license but also you need to check with Microsoft to ensure that your computer is able to run Windows 11. Unfortunately I think if you are running a system early than Windows 10 then it's extremely unlikely that your computer is ready to run Windows 11. If you're running Windows 10 then you should have an app on the system called PC Health Check. If you have then run that and that will tell you whether your system is compatible with Windows 11 or not. If you don't have the PC Health Check app on your system then it may have been removed just search for PC Health Check app on Microsoft's website to see details on how you can download it again. But like I say, if you don't have the PC Health Check app and you don't remember removing it, then it's quite possible that unfortunately your PC isn't compatible anyway. So what do we need? First of all, as I say, you have to have a compatible PC. So make sure you do all the checks first, go into the PC Health Check app and check your system. If your computer is more than around about three, four years old as of 2022, then again, probably isn't compatible with Windows 11. Next thing we need to do is we need to open up our browser. In this example, I'm going to show you how to do this using Microsoft Edge because virtually every Windows PC that's current should have Microsoft Edge installed. So find that icon there, double click on it, OK, and then what we need to do is we need to go to the address bar right at the top of the screen, not the search bar in the middle, but the address bar right at the top. And we need to type in and we need to type in there www.microsoft.com forward slash software hyphen download forward slash Windows 11, all in lowercase and no spaces. If you need to, pause this video and copy this down. But I will try and put this link in the description of the video below. So like I say, once you've done that, once you've typed that in, press enter or return on your keyboard and you should get this page come up, the Microsoft page saying download Windows 11. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna create installation media to go onto a USB stick or a DVD. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this option just here, create Windows 11 installation media. So move your mouse over download now, which is just below create Windows 11 installation media, not the download now under Windows 11 installation assistant, but the one that actually says create Windows 11 installation media. Move your mouse over that left click once. And then in the top right hand corner of the screen, if you're using Microsoft Edge, you'll have that media creation tool. OK, so once it's downloaded, then what we need to do is we're going to close out of um, Edge. So click on the cross in the top right hand corner. Click on any yellow folder on your system and then find downloads. It could be on the left here. It could be here. It could be in both places. It might be on a couple of times on the left. But uh, whatever way you choose, just go into downloads, OK? And then we're looking for a file called Media Creation Tool W11. That's Media Creation Tool W11. Move your mouse over it, double left click, and then you'll get this come up. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Well, as long as it says Microsoft Windows and the verified publisher is Microsoft Corporation, then move your mouse over yes and left click once. Now, it will say getting a few things ready. This might take a bit of time, just be patient with it. And then you've got to accept the terms and conditions. So obviously have a look down the terms and conditions, make sure you agree to them or make sure that yeah you, you, you're okay with them and then click on accept. 
So now again, it's gone back to getting a few things ready. And here we go. So it's actually recommended that I download English United Kingdom because I'm in United Kingdom and the edition is Windows 11. Now, if you uh, are doing this for another PC or you don't like those settings there, then untick the box that says use the recommended options for this PC and use the drop down to select the language you want or the edition you want. Now at the moment, you've only got a choice of Windows 11 or Windows 11, you can't change that. So, but anyway, I'm gonna stick that tick back in there because it does apply to uh, this PC. Move your mouse over next, left click once. Okay, so once you see this screen, you've gotta choose whether or not you're gonna use a USB flash drive to create your media or a DVD. Now, if you're using a USB flash drive, it must be at least eight gigabytes in size. It can be more, but you must be aware that it's going to delete anything on the flash drive so make sure you've got nothing important on there if you have then copy it somewhere else where it's going to be secure because this process is going to wipe it now like i say it can be a flash drive that's larger than eight gigabytes but obviously it's a bit of a waste of money if you're putting in a 128 gigabyte flash drive to only use eight gigabyte of it because you can't use this flash drive for anything else if you're going to create a dvd then it needs to be a dvd and not a cd so it needs to be at least 4.7 gigabytes in size the dvd and you must ensure that you've got a dvd drive of course i would preferably say avoid using dvd rws they're rewritables and try and use DVD minus R or even plus R if you're going to go down that method. So I'm going to select at the moment USB flash drive. I'm just going to show you the process for that and then we're going to show you the process for creating a DVD. So make sure that you've got whatever method you want selected and then click next. Now at the moment it's telling me that it can't find a USB flash drive so I've selected that but it's saying it can't find it. The reason why? haven't got it plugged in. So let's plug it into the computer, plug it in, it should make a noise and you'll probably get an autoplay come up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen like mine. That'll disappear after a second. If you don't get it, then just leave it for 30 seconds and then click on refresh drive list and then hopefully it should then appear. If it doesn't, remove the USB, give it a bit of a blow at the end of the connector and put it back in again. If it still doesn't detect it, try another USB port. If it still doesn't detect it, try another USB drive. But like I say, it needs to be eight GB or more. So once you see removable drives come up there and your removable drive is, is there, um, then click on next. But I should say before you click on next, if you've got several other USB drives plugged in, then now's the time perhaps to unplug them. Make sure that they're not plugged in because you don't want to overwrite the wrong drive. So just make sure you've got one plugged in and then click on next. Now it says getting a few things ready and now what it's gonna do, it's gonna start downloading Windows 11. Now this is gonna take a bit of time, really depends on the speed of your internet connection. I've got about 20 megabit internet connection and this process takes about half an hour to 40 minutes to download so it's not going to take five minutes so if you're running this off of a laptop then make sure it's plugged in at the mains right now because you really don't want it going to sleep and uh, obviously just come up and check it occasionally perhaps wiggle the mouse just to make sure that the laptop doesn't go to sleep but I'm going to pause this video and we're going to come back to it once it's finished this part of the download. Okay, so Windows 11 is nearly finished downloading, but once it's finished downloading, it's then going to install on the USB stick. So at the moment, it's just verifying the download. So it's just checking to make sure everything's in order, nothing's corrupted before it copies it onto the USB. This bit might take a bit of time, there we go, now it's creating Windows 11 media. So make sure that your USB stick remains firmly into the computer. Make sure that the computer doesn't switch off and just leave this for the time being. I'm gonna pause this video and we're gonna come back to it as soon as this part has finished. Okay, so it's nearly finished setting up the USB stick. Hopefully not much longer. And there we go, it says your USB flash drive is ready. So just click on finish 
and uh, it cleans up a little bit and uh, then it disappears. Now this media creation tool in downloads, we can delete that, we're finished with that now. So just click on that and then click on the bin just up there and that will delete that from there. And then if we want to install from the USB drive, just find the USB drive here. This is if we want to upgrade our current version of Windows 10 to 11, then just double click on the setup and follow the instructions on screen. Also, if you want to reinstall Windows, if you've had a, a problem with Windows 11 and you want to reinstall over the top, you can do it from, from there as well. Or what you can do is you can turn your computer off, stick the USB stick in one of the USB uh, ports on the computer and boot from the USB. You'll need to contact your computer manufacturer to find out exactly how you can boot from USB. But if you get stuck, then it's always worth trying either the uh, F12 key, the F8 key, the F2 key or the escape key when starting your computer up, but check with your computer manufacturer. So as I also said, I'm gonna show you how to burn it to a DVD as well. So if you got to this point where it says choose which media to use, select ISO file, okay? Now you must have a DVD, 4.7 giga, gigabytes, and it must be empty. Uh, particularly, I would recommend using a DVD minus R or a DVD plus R, as opposed to a rewritable, an RW. So uh, what, we don't need to insert that just yet. So just select ISO file and then click on next and then click on save just there. And it will save it in the documents folder. So let's just click save. Okay, so it says getting th a few things ready. And again, it's gonna download and this is gonna take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna pause this video and we'll come back to it once it's downloaded. Okay, so as we can see, it's nearly finished downloading. It did take quite a while. It took about 35 minutes, I think it was quite a while but hopefully not too much longer. There we go, now it's verifying the download. Just check in to make sure that everything is okay with it, that it's not corrupted whilst downloading. And now it's creating the ISO file. And again, this bit shouldn't take too long, but uh, I'm gonna pause this video and we're gonna come back to it when it's nearly finished. Okay, so as we can see, it's very nearly finished. There we go. And uh, there you go, so it says here, uh, so we can go to the file here or we can go to open DVD burner. So let's do that. Let's click on open DVD burner. Okay, so on mine, it didn't look like anything had happened, but at the bottom of the screen there, there's a picture of a disc. So I'm just going to click on that and there you go. Windows disc image burner came up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert my DVD and just going to give it maybe 30 seconds just to let it recognize the disc because it, it scans it for a while. You know, the DVDs, they make those kind of strange noises for a while. And what I'm also gonna do here is I'm gonna tick this verified disc after burning because we wanna make sure that the disc is okay. We wanna make sure that it's created okay. And again, the best thing to do here is, is make sure that your computer's plugged in at the mains and that nothing else is running in the background. So don't try and use your computer for anything else while this is burning because Windows um, burning a disk to image or an image to a disk, sorry, is a real time process. And if anything interrupts it, it will stop. So just make sure that nothing's going on in the background. Make sure that you've closed all other programs. Okay, and then click on burn. And it comes up with a warning here, the disk in the selected drive already has content on it and needs to be erased before the disk image can be burnt to the disk. Are you sure you want to erase the disk? Well, like I said to you, try not to use a, a DVD RW. I'm using an RW because I'm not actually gonna use this disk for anything, it's just for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna say yes to this, but if you're using a DVD minus R or plus R and it's a blank disk, then you won't get this message. You can't erase a DVD plus or DVD minus R. They're, whatever you've got on it, it just won't erase and you won't be able to use it. So it must be a fresh disk. So let's just click yes on there if that comes up. And there we go. So it's telling me at the moment it's erasing the disk. Now, if you're, like I say, if you're using a DVD plus or DVD minus, then you shouldn't get this step come up. I'm going to pause this video while this step's going through. Okay, so it now says burning disk image to recordable disk. Now this is going to take some time. Again, 
it's I'm going to pause this video because this could take a very long time and it could look as though nothing's happening whatsoever so if it does do that if it looks as though nothing's happening just leave it that line is going to go up very very slowly so just be patient here I'm going to pause this and we're going to come back to it later on well as you can see that's very very nearly finished burning but it's now going to verify the disc. It's now going to check every single part of the disc to make sure that it's um, all okay. First of all, though, it's going to finalize the disc. Now, again, this bit might take a bit of time and it might look as though it's hung. Don't worry, it hasn't. Walk away from it, that's the best thing to do because trust me, it probably hasn't hung. It's just very, very slow burning to DVDs and CDs. The disk drive might also make strange noises. It might sound like it's stopped as well. Again, don't panic, just leave it. So here we go, it's just finishing off finalizing the disk now, it's verifying it. And again, this bit's gonna take a bit of time and again, it's gonna look like it's doing nothing, but please, just be patient with it. I'm going to pause this video and we're going to come back to it at the end of the verification process. Okay, so the verification process is nearly done again. That took a while, not as long as burn into the disc, but once it's done, hopefully we should then be able to use the disc. And you can either, like I say, use it to boot from, so turn your computer off with the disc in the drive and boot from CD. Now you'll have to contact your computer manufacturer to find out what key you have to push when turning the computer on to boot from CD. If you can't do that, then try tapping the escape key, the F12 key, the F8 key, or the F2 key. You might have to go into the BIOS and set the boot drive in there. Or if you're upgrading from Windows 10, then you can just go into the CD and double click on the setup, or sorry, shall I say the DVD and go into the setup and follow the instructions on screen. Okay, so it's come up. The disc image has been successfully burnt to the disc, so it's passed the verification and the disc has ejected. Now the verification got right to the end and then it didn't seem to do anything for about 10 minutes. So this is quite normal though, so don't worry about that. So. I'm just going to click on close there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into documents and I'm just going to delete this Windows disk image just here. Don't need that anymore because the disk has been burnt. It's taking up a lot of space on the disk. So left click once on it and then click on the bin or if you haven't got a bin up there, right click on it, click on the bin or if you haven't got a bin there, then right click on it and go to delete and that will delete it. OK, so I'm going to pop the disk back in the drive and I'm going to go to this PC and just going to wait for it to uh, appear under my DVD drive or BD-ROM drive as in this uh, particular instance. Yours might show CD drive, it might show DVD drive, it might show BD-ROM drive like mine does. Uh, but whatever it shows, look at the one with the disk on it Okay, and after a few seconds, there we go, that should come up. And if I double click on this now, as I said earlier, we should see, in actual fact, it's it's gonna auto boot, so I'm gonna click yes on there, and there you go, it's gonna start the installation or upgrade of Windows 11. But if it doesn't, then just open the disk, let's just go to open in a new window, and you're looking for this setup file there. Or like I say, if you're installing from a fresh, then uh, you can boot from the CD. So turn the computer, put the CD in, restart the computer, and hit whatever key is required on your computer to change the boot to boot to CD or boot to DVD. So there you go. I hope this guide helps. And whilst you're here at my YouTube channel, don't forget to have a look around. I've got thousands of videos covering all sorts of topics. Hopefully you'll find something to educate you, entertain you, and maybe even amuse you. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, hit that like button. If you think your friends, your family, or your work colleagues might like it, then don't forget to share this on your social media timelines. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you find out about all my latest videos the second they're released. Hit that subscribe button, then hit the bell, then hit all.
You can also find me on Twitter at CWTech and also find my website at cwtech.co.uk. Liking, sharing and subscribing really helps support this channel. Thank you very much.